I, you asked me in uh, uh, our correspondence about something about a grade level, writing for a certain grade level or something. I can't oh, remember. Oh, sure. I just wanted to ask you about how you um, change your prose from your adult writing to your children's writing, especially with uh, something like The Wonderling, where you are um, uh, trying to invoke a Dickensian feel, uh, which is sometimes a little bit above um, mm. above the grade level. So how are you making concessions without changing your vision for the story and being true to your prose? Well, this, the, the thing I was going to mention that sort of relates to that ha has to do with grade level is there's a character in, so it has to, have to do with the way I write, but more the content, is that there is a character in book two that I wanted to kill. And he's a nice character. And I asked my editor, so mid with middle grade, is it okay if, like a really nice guy gets murdered, <laughs> like he's murdered. And she said, if he really, really needs to be murdered, if there's another way to do it, that would be better. And so I thought about it, and then I came up with an even better thing to happen to him, which totally changed my book. But um, that's that's one of those things about grade level that, like I, I don't sit down and write for a grade level at all. I, I just started, like I just started writing this book. Um, However, year 12, I'm 10. And so I, I, I think it's, it's really natural for me to sort of 10 to 12, sometimes I'm 12 years old. Um, but it's, it's that period that fascinates me, that pre-hormonal pre time where, you know, you don't care about, you know, lovey-dovey stuff. It's really, yes, the last bit of peace you're ever going to have. Enjoy it. Right, right. <laughs> and it's, it's really about, like, I was not into princess stories. I was not into story As a kid, I was not into stories about um, uh, what happens in the classroom or everyday family stories or family dramas or boy, girl, whatever. I loved adventure stories. I was obsessed with them. I love polar expedition exploration diaries. I loved uh, the the quest kind of you know. I I was really so so um, pretty much everything I write is like is like that for adults too. Even my even the memory palace. So um, you know when I was writing the Wonderling, I just just didn't think about language level. I didn't think about anything. And I just wrote it and I just realized real, I just, you know, I really trust my editor to, um, to let me know if something is too advanced and, um, you know, getting my, I have these, you know, I get, so when I get, um, man, um, you know, uh, my manuscript back from my editor, like different versions, there's the, I, my UK editor, and the, the UK publisher is a sister company of the American publisher because there's Candlelick Press and there's Walker Press, which is the UK publisher. So I hear back from two editors and two copy editors and two sets. It's like crazy. It's all in hard copy. It's like really old school. Um, and it's like being attacked by a gang. <laughs> yeah. It's totally, and, and like crazy different colored pencil marks and post-its and everything. Um, but I, I love my editor because I'll have something in there that sounds to me like music and it might be a little less clear, but it sounds beautiful. And to make it more clear would destroy the music of the, of the, of the sentence. And the copy editor will always go for clarity. And my editor who also comes from music she was a music major. She's, you know, we, we both um, sort of have very strong music backgrounds. She, she'll write, no, I agree with Mira. Go for the, um, go for the music. You know, it's, 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 it's like, I, I just listened to an interview with Philip Pullman about something like this. And he, he was talking about how the first time he heard I can't remember what poem by T.S. Eliot it was, but the first time he heard this poem, and he recited part of this poem, it was so beautiful. He said, I didn't know what it meant, but the music of the language created a hunger in me. 
it that I didn't know I had. And that that's what I I want to do with language. That's what I want to do. Is I is I I because that happened to me too as a child. I would read something. I read thing. I read books much more advanced than I sh- you know I didn't understand a lot of it. You know I was fifth grade reading you know Tolstoy and reading all kinds of advanced books and 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 but you know reading Virginia Woolf at a really young age and reading you know a line like. Um, from the open window, the voice of the beauty of the world came, blah, 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 blah. I'm like, what? You know, I'm just like blown away by this, by this sound and I don't understand it, but it creeps into your bones and, and, and it creates this hunger. And that, that to me is about, is what a beautiful, beautiful sentence does. And so to go back to the idea of, you know, like some words are more advanced perhaps than a middle grade level um i think i'm gonna ju- i just i'm going to trust my editor on that one um we, we actually didn't change a thing except there were certain words that were obscene in uk speak that i wasn't aware of and so we had to remove those let's get and, risque what kind of words are we talking um what did I call in the beginning of the book? It says before he was called the Wonderling, he had many names, and I list these names, and some of them are, you know, they're bully names. Kids, kids bully uh, other groundlings bullied him, and one name, one word. I can't remember what it is, but it's it 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 means um something I can't say on. <laughs> <laughs> in public I was completely and I thought I knew like a lot of British slang because I really I listened to like I really listened to um a lot of uh uh British audiobooks I watch you know movies I I I I pay attention to the different dialects I'm trying to get different dialects even though I'm not a native speaker you know I'm trying to get um I can recognize you know, a Northumbrian accent as opposed to a cock accent as opposed to, you know, pretty good with that because it's music to me. Um, but a lot of the words, I just, you know, put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> so so we had to, we had to uh, tone down some of those. We also had to, um, it's a balance because, you know, it, even things like, um, Every you know, everyone sat at table. Well, we say the table. So I kind of go for the British version because it's sort of set in that world. So anyway, my 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 publisher my publisher slash editor is great at that. Um, 